Hey everybody, this is Jake M from the Oregon Surfers Fishing Club and I'm getting ready for a beginner's workshop for tomorrow. So they're going to get free decals. As you can see here, they will get their pick. They will get uh, some hooks from Santiam Fishing Rods. A magnetic fishing rod holder that goes on your car. They can get their choice of claw weights or spider weights. I'm also giving them some snap swivels to put on for hooking up their weights and leaders. They'll get a three hook leader from me, two leaders from a member, and then I'm going to also then give them half a pack of worms each to start fishing. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow, but just getting ready for tomorrow. Okay, so it's about 7.30. I'm at South Beach State Park. I'm here to teach a beginner's workshop for club members. Uh, this is the first time I've actually fished South Beach, so I was going to show these guys, you know, what I'm looking for. Unfortunately, only two people showed up today. Uh, other people had things come up. So the conditions are a little unpleasant because there's a pretty decent breeze going on, about 12 miles an hour. I don't feel it quite here because we're protected by these dunes here. But uh, when I was getting into my car from home, uh, it's pretty stiff wind. So let's see, low tide is just hitting right now. It's a very low tide at about a minus 1.4. High tide is at 1.30, which is just about six hours away. And it's a 5.8 high tide, I believe. So it's a seven foot swing in a six hour window. So so it's coming in about a foot an hour. So it's rising pretty quickly. Uh, in terms of swell energy, swell energy is only about 170 today or 110, I kind of forget, but it's very low. So that's what makes it nice for our beginners to uh, come out in this kind of surf. Okay, so just, just giving freebies away, giving weights, decals, magnetic rod holder, leaders, hooks, and worms. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we got both people here. That's Joe Monks, and this is Alan Pastor. Uh, it's from Corvallis, and Joe came from Albany. So we were just informed by the state park ranger that there's no razor climbing here because it's still toxic, which I was surprised. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is what South Beach looks like. This is the main day access parking lot. Bathroom's there, and the trail to the beach. There's two uh, trails that go this way. And the beach is just over the rise. So anyway, we got both waivers in and uh, appreciate them bringing it and having it signed ahead of time. Made things a lot faster. So everybody got rigged up. I taught them how to use a snap swivel on the main line and then snap it onto the leader. So we're all using three hooks and gulp worms. So we're just getting to the beach now. So the sand's really soft here and it's really hard to walk. So it's kind of tough. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so just to let you know, whenever I come to a beach, and again, I haven't fished there before. Oh, I didn't know that there was a jetty there. Uh, we're so close. But anyway, what I'm looking for is you see where there's no crashing waves, so it's really shallow there and further out of the crashing waves. Yep. So ideally, we'd be down there. It's a long rock though, where the where waves are crashing. crashing no, the waves are crashing right against the beach because oh. you want to be able to cast into crashing waves. So let's go try right here because there's a few here and we can try to work our way to the right. But uh, here, right here in front of us, you see the waves are crashing that is dark green. So that's a trough and it's dead water. So if you get out to the far waves, which I doubt we could, um, that would be the ideal place to fish. And then you can see a sandbar. So see the waves crashing there? And then you can see the dry beach. There's water and then there's light tan water. So there's a sandbar out there. If you can walk to and get there, that would be the ideal place because then you'd be right into the crashing waves. So if tide was going out, you could probably get out there in about another hour. But with tide coming in, 
then um, you'd get stuck if you got onto that sandbar. So that's why you don't want to go on a sandbar as tide's coming in. Make sense? So let's go try down in this area here. Uh, just for it, and then we'll just keep moving to the right for a little bit and see what happens. And then as tide comes in, conditions will usually change. So, oh, here's another thing too. So uh, you see the sandbar here? So what's nice about coming at low tide is you can see the structure. So as the tide comes in, that trough is only gonna get deeper. The waves will get closer. So that would probably be a better place to fish at higher tides. Make sense? Yeah. But all this stuff is gonna get covered in the next six hours. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think you'll see the waves change as we start fishing. Okay? Yeah. Took about a five minute walk, seven minute walk. And we're gonna try, um, so we're gonna try north. And here's the uh, south jetty of Newport. So we're not that very far from the jetty, which is interesting. I didn't realize South Beach was this close. South Beach, you know, the fishing area to be this close to the jetty. Okay, so there's some crashing waves right here. They're reachable. So we're gonna try right here for a little bit. So it was our first cast. Uh, Alan's to my right, Joe's further out. But catching conditions here actually look pretty decent. There's one, there's cr uh, concurrent crashing waves one after another. Hopefully, uh, we'll get a bite. So this is my third cast, so we're just playing leapfrog, so, yeah. And so what we're doing is that we're spacing ourselves about 15 to 20 yards apart, and then we keep moving along the beach as we don't get any action. So hopefully we cover more beach by working as a team. So I guess we've been fishing about 10 or 15 minutes. This is like my fifth cast, I believe, but Joe and Alan are getting the hang of it because we're moving pretty smoothly down the beach and you know we're all waiting to try and get a bite but we're covering the beach pretty well right now so I'm pretty confident if there's fish out there we're gonna get a bite so as we keep moving north at first it was dead water but within the last five minutes conditions have really changed favorably here where there's a lot of big crashing waves close by so I'm hoping that'll change our luck but again with uh, a seven foot increase in tidal height from low to high today. I would expect conditions to change pretty quickly. So Alan, hey, the waves are picking up and it's incoming, so be careful of the waves coming to hit you, okay? I just wanted to warn you. So wave action right now is really good. Can't believe we're not getting a bite. So there's a pretty strong drift today. And Joe was using a claw and he was getting a pretty strong drift, so then um, changed to a spider, and he says it's working much better now. So again, that's just the advantage of trying different weights and having a snap swivel on the bottom allowed him to change the weight route very quickly. So I think Joe is the first guy I've ever fished with who fishes like me. He said he was taught to fish that way uh, by you know, using the spinning rod upside down. So he said he was just taught by like, his dad that way and that's just the way he's always fished now now again it's just you know again there's no right way or wrong way it's just you know the way that makes you most feel comfortable so i get a lot of grief for fishing upside down from my posts but uh, i don't care i do what's most comfortable for me you know and joe's the same way he does what's comfortable for him and that's what i always try and advise everybody that you know everything you choose rod reel braid bait line hooks it's all personal preference, so there's no right way or wrong way. You just do it your way and enjoy the time. But don't worry about what other people say. Just enjoy the time out on the surf. Hey, hey Joe, watch out. <laughs> you just stand there like, <laughs> be careful here. Take a couple casts with this. This is the Santiam rod you always read about on the club page. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but take like three or four casts with it. So I'm just letting Joe try my rod, but his rod has got a really long butt. It is a Pen, Pen Fierce 3 rated heavy moderate, rated for 30 to 65 pound braid and 2 to 6 ounce lures. So uh, it's a pretty stiff rod because it's rated for 6 ounce. 
and he's got an 8,000 reel on it. I was trying to let people try my Santium rod because there's so much hype on it on the club. The rod actually casts pretty decently. I was kind of surprised. I thought it was going to be pretty stiff, but uh, it's not all that stiff. Trying Joe's rod a couple times. The big thing that I see about it is that with the butt being so long, it's making my left arm really tired trying to hold the rod. The other thing is that with it being so long, I have to hold the rod up higher, and so I can't lower the rod like I normally do. So again, it's just different preferences for different people. What do you think, dude? Yeah, it's a lot more action, so it's probably better for the you know, surf virtual small. Watch out, watch out. <laughs> hey, I rebent the weight. Wow, some fish just jumped right there. Yeah, I don't see them. It must be uh, herring. Oh, really? I didn't think herring came in this time of year. Shit, there ought to be fish here. But I rebent your legs. Oh, okay, thanks. Much better stick now. Okay. Want to change rods? Yeah. Yours cast pretty far. I was surprised. Yeah. And it's the more flexible than I thought it would be because it's rated for six ounce. Right. Yeah, this is, you know, the, what we typically typically use on like the outer banks. It's something longer with a lot more, um, a lot less flexibility. Yeah, yeah. Like a but bigger fish. Yeah, yeah, Drum yeah. and bass and blues. Yeah, so yeah. you have to get something a little bit lighter duty like that. Yeah, they, they, that's why I really like this rod. It casts yeah. pretty far. Yeah. With a lot, of, a lot less work. Yeah. Um, but that's just a nice rod. I want to keep moving, man. We're starting, so be careful of that dark green water, yeah, though. Yeah, I was just going to say, there's a rip right over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think pretty soon, we're going to run out of room. Yeah. So either we walk all the way around, which is a hell of a walk, or we just keep, we just fish our way back. Okay. How long are you fishing today? I don't know, probably till one or two weeks. Because you could try, there's another good beach called Curtis Street. Uh -huh. It's about 20, 25 minutes from here. South or north? South. Okay. Uh, but Curtis Street, um, it, I know people have caught there in the last within the last week or two. Okay. Not a lot of action, but uh, it's a nice little beach and it's a short, easy walk to the beach too. Okay. But I can give you directions if we go back to the parking lot. Cool. Want to try? You want to try this rod? It's called a Santiam rod. Chased some bait fish through here a while ago. I, well, yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot of bait fish here yeah. jumping. I don't know what it is. I'm letting Alan try my rod. Uh, his rod doesn't have a rating on it because it got a race, but it's a pretty short rod. I'm guessing it's about a six foot rod, maybe six and a half. And he's got 50 pound braid because that's all he had. Okay, so we're gonna keep trying here. I snapped your rod, I snapped your leader. I'll go re rig. <laughs> that's too busy talking. Okay, finally got Alan's rod rigged back up. Took me a little bit longer. The wind was blowing. It was making untangling the leader really difficult. So it took me a little bit of time. So we're going to start fishing our way back towards the parking lot now. So we went as far north as we could until we ran into a trough. And we would have had to walk all the way around the trough to get back to some decent crashing waves. So uh, we decided just to keep walking back towards the parking lot. So actually, he uh, let me go help him, but uh, he just snapped his rig, so I'm gonna go help him retie. How many hooks? You, yeah, you only lost the sink. Let me. How many? Let's see. Let's take a look. I just lost the sink here. It looks like. No, you lost one hook too. Because ah. it's but you know you know how to do a clinch knot. No, nope. I okay. know how to do a knot though. No, let me do a clinch knot. It only take a little uh, bit, and it'll be much more solid. I know that. Uh, Whoops. My grandfather was an avid saltwater fisherman. Oh, okay. I remember being about that man could literally go out and cast a bear hook and catch fish. That's funny. Well, back in those days, I think you could. <laughs> Before everything got out fished, yeah. all fished out. You always say, oh, that's all how you spit on the hook. <laughs> that's true. Okay, there you go, sir. So that's oh, all I do, you. too. I would do the same thing. Because I, I, I don't, if I got two hooks and I got enough line, I just retire away. Right. You think you'll go to a different beach if we quit? Probably, yeah. Okay, let's give it a few more minutes, but uh, my take would be to change beaches. Because there's two other, actually there's two other beaches. Lost Creek is okay. Uh, people have done really well there and that's on the way to Kirk. 
Okay, so I think we've been here, I'm guessing about 45 minutes now. And I'm guessing we just got in about eight to 10 casts, uh, maybe less, a little less than that. But I'm suggesting these guys, if they got more time to try to go to a different beach because uh, there's nothing happening here. So I'm gonna send them down to uh, Lost Creek and Curtis Street. Again, high tide's like 1.30, so I think Joe might stick around that long. So he might be able to hit incoming high tide at Curtis or uh, Lost Creek. So he might have a decent shot there. So one of the things we did well today as a team is that we worked pretty well as a team unit covering the beach going from south to north and then north to south so we've covered a lot of beach and it's been pretty methodical so there was a bite to be had uh, we definitely covered the area so it just couldn't get any action cast and i'm going to send these guys to a different beach hopefully they'll get some action at the other places energy's also kicking up as tides coming in because it's driving us up further away from the crashing waves. So uh, now it's getting hard to hit the crashing waves because we're being driven so far up the beach. Okay, that's it for now. And we'll do a wrap up once it gets back to the parking lot. Hey, so uh, let me ask you a question. So what was the biggest thing you learned today? Or what could you, what could I do to help improve people? Um, well, I like the uh, thing about the, the um, snap swivel on the end there making yeah, leader change idea. out okay yep. and uh just you know about the the waves and and uh, the timing of the the you know casting really back in okay yeah. all right you got any suggestions how i can make it better um, i'd like all the free stuff oh yeah that, 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 <laughs> that was good yeah, yeah and how the how'd you like the spider compared to the claw yeah i like that actually yeah i'm gonna have to find some more of those and they're hard to find um yeah you want one or two more you're a newbie. You're sure. a newbie, sure. sure. How about you? Sure, I'll take no? a call okay. so I can cast for it. Absolutely. <laughs> and what'd you learn? What was the biggest thing you learned today, well, I, Alan? I, I need to get a different pole. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, help yourself to some weights. But uh, yeah, again, I, again, this is a Santiam, the club members. Oh, so oh, actually, you can make a homemade one, so you can just use the egg sinker, mm -hmm. and then get 18-gauge um, wire or 16-gauge wire. Right. And, and just put it through that's how i actually started using yeah. for a weight right yeah, so right. i just I, so i just used an egg sinker mm -hmm. and i put wires through it twisted it and it works just right. as well make sure you use a snap swivel because uh these guys have brass eyelets so it doesn't abrade the line but if you use your own wire always use a snap swivel so you don't braid the line and lose. right so gentlemen nice right. meeting you thank you alan thank you. pastor thank you and jim monks joe monks joe monks i'm joe sorry monks. i knew that and then joe monks uh, I'm tired. Yeah. Uh, so it was really a pleasure fishing and meeting with like you guys. Appreciate and, the, uh, yeah, if you guys ever want to come to Wade Creek, mm -hmm. you know, let me know. I'll let, keep watching for my reports at Wade Creek. As soon as you see me start catching stuff, that's <laughs> yeah, when you want to come out. Yeah, that's the reason why I post, mm -hmm. is if I were you guys, I wouldn't be going to Wade Creek. <laughs> but uh, as soon as you see me start catching, you know, I'll usually start telling people. And yeah, that, shout. yeah, that would be the time to uh, drive out. Cool. Okay, man. All right. All right. You guys got every all the giveaways, right? Have a good one, guys. All right, man. Nice meeting you guys. Yeah. 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 If I were you, if you're going to eat, I would go get a parking spot and then okay. go eat yeah. there. All right. Because there's only eight parking spots and then a lot of times it gets filled up. Because yeah. a, a lot of people just like walk their dogs and stuff. Right. Okay. All right, man. Nice seeing you guys. You I'll do the video later tonight. All right. I can show my wife I wasn't fooling around. <laughs> all right. Nice seeing you guys. Okay, so that's the end of the first workshop. Uh, big pleasure meeting Joe and Alan and being able to give them free stuff. Unfortunately, we didn't get any action, but at least they got to learn the basics and now they're headed to Curtis Street. So hopefully, hey, you guys, post how you do at Curtis. Okay? Okay, so they're gonna post how they do at Curtis, but I think they're gonna go to Curtis together. Hey, uh, Alan, I would go to Curtis right away to get a parking spot, okay? Okay, so, um, End of the first workshop, two people showed up. Uh, they were pretty happy. They got a lot of free stuff. They got to learn to, uh, how to look for the waves. We worked pretty well as a team. And what they liked was learning about how I use a snap swivel to tie leaders and weights. Uh, Joe really liked the spiders a lot. He wants to go get more. And Alan actually liked the spiders quite a bit too. That's all he actually used today. So anyway, uh, overall, I would say it was a success except for the low turnout. 
and I have to decide whether I'm going to hold another workshop because it's a lot of overhead to register people, keep track of attendance, do waivers, try and watch the safety factor. So it's a little more work than just saying, hey, if you show up at Wade Creek at this time, I'll be there to help you fish. So I'll see how it goes and whether I offer another beginning workshop or just offer members to meet me at Wade Creek. Okay, that's it for today. And again, Saturday, May 20th at South Beach State Park. What a lovely day except for the wind.